Fables is a co-op game where two to four stuffies go on adventures in a mysterious realm to stop the growing evil that seems to involve their little girl. I'm going to keep things simple in order to avoid spoilers. Once everyone has grabbed a character card and bits, seated the dice bag, and readied the decks, you're all set to play Chapter 1, The Big Girl Bed. Read the right hand page to learn about the story. As you progress, you'll read a portion of the page, then stop until accomplishing certain tasks on the map. Let's look at the map now. Stuffed Fables is a tactical battle game. You and your allies will move around a grid, attacking enemies, searching points of interest, and so on. Your characters start on the pause. Minions, if they feature on this map, will enter on the nut and bolt icons. The word balloons are where you can talk to the lost, which are the toys that live in the fall, stuff Fables' world. In the top right corner, you'll see this map's search difficulty. In order to search the item deck, you'll need to pass this test. Colored lines are barriers, and you cannot move into those spaces unless using that colored die. Once you've successfully completed whatever task it is you have on the page, move on to the next one. On a normal turn, you'll grab five dice from the bag. Roll any whites to see if you find stuffing, meaning health. Your roll must equal or beat your current health. Place blacks on the threat track. If the number of black dice on the threat track equals or beats the number of minions in play, they get to go. Reds are for melee attacks, greens are for ranged attacks, yellows are for searching, and blues don't do anything specific, although they often help with defending. Purples are wild. You'll be able to perform as many actions as you like as long as you have dice. In addition to moving, battling, searching, and doing skill checks, you can store a die and encourage an ally, which means giving them a die, or discarding a die so that they can gain one of your stuffing. The game will sometimes instruct you to reveal a sleep card, usually after a player collapses, which I'll talk about soon. Once a restless card is revealed, certain gameplay and story events may change. Once the waking card is revealed, players will read that ending instead of the asleep ending if they win. In addition to your character's name and profile image, you have an active ability that's available at all times. The three abilities below that are earned by spending hearts. Unused hearts are stored in the bottom left along with your stuffing and a stored die that you set aside to be used later. You gain hearts by accomplishing story tasks. You'll also gain buttons as you play, most often by defeating enemies. The opportunity to spend buttons will pop up as you play. Minions will either come out as random encounters or named encounters. Random encounters will have you shuffle the minion deck, then deal out cards matching the number of players. Named encounters will have you search for a specific minion or minions. Minion defense is at the bottom of the card along with her type. In order to defeat that minion, your attack must equal or beat this number. When minions attack, roll a threat die, then follow the instructions on the minion card. If you collapse, meaning you lose all of your stuffing, tip your mini over. You also lose your status cards, buttons, and hearts, then reveal a sleep card. You can still take your turn, but if you don't find any stuffing when you draw dice from the bag, you can't take any further actions. The other players can use the encourage action to help a collapsed ally. There are some other things in Stuff Fables, but this should give you a general idea of how the game works. Read and have an adventure in the storybook. That's Stuffed Fables. The storybook, character cards, decks, and other bits make Stuff Fables surprisingly large. Because you still use four stuffies even in a two-player game, save this one for the dining table. This is a game about words, not numbers. There is a lot of reading, and it's at least grade three level, with a handful of trickier words, such as primordial. If they don't get turns as the bookkeeper, I'd say strong rating seven year olds with game experience should be fine. By nine or 10, I think kids can handle taking their turn as the bookkeeper. 
With setup and takedown, plus the upkeep during the game and between maps, expect a full chapter to at least be 90 minutes, but usually closer to 2 hours. To be honest, depending on luck and how long it takes you to read the pages, it could take even longer than that. In Stuff Fables' second chapter, we were in a room where the water was rising quickly. My Flops, Ariel's Theodora, and Dad Stitch dealt with enemies, then Dad jumped across to investigate a chest. Because he had a status effect that wouldn't let him use or store purple wild dice, he had to wait on a blue die to try and remove the effect or agreeing to pass the skill test. Neither came out. He was stuck there for about three turns until he was finally able to join us so we could end the level. Stuffed Fables is super cute. The player boards, minis, enemy cards. I love the look of these. The map art isn't the best though, but it's thematic. Mechanisms for progressing. If you have this, go here. If you don't, go there. They're pretty standard for storytelling games. I like that there are spots to visit on the board to trigger conversations or events, but there aren't that many. I've seen games with separate books that have tons of results giving more replayability. In this game, there isn't a huge difference in what'll happen if you replay a map. The first chapter is boring, the enemies aren't difficult, and there's barely any reason to explore. My dad saw that there is an official variant available to make things more challenging, and it's nice to have that. Stuffed Fables is really cute. I love the idea, but I just didn't find it to be as fun, exciting, or good as I hoped. If the first chapter didn't push you away, the second chapter is better. Kind of. The writing is still not very good, and combat is boring, the rulebook is bad, and the whole time, I just wanted it to be over. The story isn't nearly as interesting as one that would develop in a role playing game like Mouse Guard or Magical Kitty Save the Day. And the gameplay isn't nearly as interesting as some of my recommended family games like Dogs, Chai, Tiny Towns, and so on. If you have kids aged 7 to 10, maybe see if you can try this one out first at a local board game cafe or borrow from a friend, just in case your family feels the same way about it as we do.